YouTube and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. We're here today at the Loose Cave to talk to you guys about uh, the Omnibus F7 and the 32-bit Wraith ESCs. So while I did this last build video with the FPV Syndicate Shredder, I did run into some problems with, uh, with those two things. Um, so I'm going to walk you guys over some of those problems, how to solve them, and how to get Betaflight pass-through working so that you can talk to the 32-bit ESCs and do all your configuration and do software reverse without having to fuck around with the wires. So I hope this is helpful to you guys and I'll do other videos like this as uh, things come up or if I find other things about the Omnibus F7 or the 32-bit Wraiths that I feel are worth sharing with the community. So first thing I want to talk to you guys about with the 32-bit ESCs, or sorry, with the F7 Omnibus before we hop into doing the pass-through is a, a small issue that I had with the receiver. So when I was doing the video and when I was talking to you guys, I soldered my receiver uh, to these ports right here. So right at the top, so uh, let's see here. Um, your USB is down here, and your uh, boot buttons are up here by my finger. Are they? Nope. Crap. Okay. So uh, what we're looking at here is the Omnibus F7 uh, manual, essentially, and I'll put up a picture of it later after I explain it to you guys with everything marked up so that you can see it in a paused frame and everything else. So anyway, right here, you have your USB, okay? And here you have your boot buttons. And the arrow for the, the stuff is pointing that way. These are your uh, motor pins on this side right here. And this is all the other pins that you've been using. So when we built this the first time and when I was talking to you guys, uh, if you see here, there's one thing that says SBUS, SBUS PPM right there. So you'd think that these three uh, pins right here would be good to go for your SBUS. However, what I found out is that the firmware for the uh, Omnibus F7 currently does not have an inverter working on that port. So if you put your uh, receiver, your SBUS receiver on that port, it's likely that it's not gonna work. And I chased that problem for about two hours. You know, I was about ready to like toss this thing and say like, whatever, fuck it, I'm gonna use a different flight controller. But then I talked to, um, and then I, I remembered that there was a uh, Project Bull Falcon video that showed the receiver working. So I just checked it out and I noticed that he had it soldered in a completely different way and I'm gonna show you guys where. So it's still on that same side. So we were here before, but actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder it over here on these three pins. So we have ground and three volt, five volt, and then we have uh, our signal right here, the RX1. This RX1 does have a proper inverter. So if you install it here, it's gonna work. And that's what I did, I put it there and all of a sudden my receiver works on, uh, I think it was UART1 as serial RX. No problem, it worked on that pin right there. So it's uh, these three pins almost at the bottom right next to the boot button right here. So here's the boot button and here is the pin. So I'll show you guys a pause frame of this stuff after this so that you can uh, take a look and see what I'm talking about. The other thing that you must remember is, especially when you're using this here, is that on the rear side of the board, right here, on the bottom, right by where those pins were, right where we were working at, just on the other side, there's this uh, jumper system right here with VCC in the middle, five volts and three volts. So you have to bridge the two that you need for your receiver. So if you have a five volt receiver, you bridge VCC and five, and if you have a 3.3, .3, you do 3.3 .3 and VCC. So that should be pretty straightforward. So that was the only real uh, technical glitch that I ran into in terms of getting this thing to actually work. The other problem that I had was getting a uh, uh, Beale Heli 32 pass-through to work. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to my computer and walk you guys through the whole process of getting pass-through working and uh, getting the F7 flashed properly and getting the proper uh, beta flight configurator so that you can do all this good stuff. So stay tuned and let's go through that process right now. Okay guys, so I'm about to walk you through the whole process of getting pass-through working and getting your beta flight or your Omnibus F7 working with the latest beta flight and everything else. So first step we're going to do is we are going to go to uh, Betaflight or github.com Betaflight Betaflight configurator. So I'm going to have these links, all the links that I'm talking about will be in the description of this video. So don't worry about trying to remember anything like that. So you're going to come here to the Betaflight configurator GitHub page. And on the right side right here, this green button says clone or download. You're going to click that and you're going to say download zip. So you're going to get a zip of the latest, uh, most recent Betaflight configurator, which is 3.1.1, which is what you're going to need to be able to um, 
work with the latest PL Heli 32 and get past through working. So now that we've downloaded the uh, configurator right here, I'm just gonna go and find it in my folders here. So here it is. And I'm gonna move this somewhere that is in my downloads, but you can move them wherever the hell you want. So I have this folder right here and I am going to, let's delete that for a sec. Sorry. So you have here your beta flight configurator master that we just downloaded and we're just gonna go ahead and extract that to its own little folder. So boom, no problem. Okay, so there's two folders in there and this is all this stuff. So we're interested on this, uh, this folder right here. And what we're gonna do is now we're gonna go to our Chrome uh, colon forward slash forward slash extensions and we are going to find beta flight, which is right here. And we're gonna disable it and we're going to trash it. So gone, remove, remove your beta flight, it's gone. You can leave uh, beta flight black box explorer and the old BLHeli configurator, you can leave these here, no problem. So the next thing you need to do is to make sure that your extensions are set in developer mode. So right here, there's a little thing at the top, there's developer mode, make sure you tick that. Once you've ticked that and the developer mode is, in, is enabled, you're gonna go back to that beta flight folder that we, we just downloaded and you're literally just gonna drag and drop it right into your extensions window. And boom, there you go. So beta flight configurator has been installed on uh, my Chrome. So if I go to my Windows key and type in beta flight, it's gonna open the new 3.1.1. You can see it right here, 3.1.1. Cool, awesome, so we did that. Let's leave that alone for a second. We have our latest beta flight. So the next thing we need to do is to get the latest beta flight firmware for our Omnibus F7, which is the 3.2. So to do that, we're gonna go to uh, the Boris's Jenkins page. This is where all the builds get run, essentially. So what you wanna do is you wanna look for one of these things here on the side. You definitely don't want one of the red ones. These yellow ones are usually okay. So these are all the builds. Every time one of these goes through, uh, a new fresh set of hexes has been generated by the server. So I'm gonna go here to the latest one, uh, which was today pretty much. And I'm gonna look around and make sure that there's no failures. So it says here, test results, no failures. That's good, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And then all you're gonna do is right here, build artifacts. There's beta flight 3.2, blah, 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 zip. So you're gonna click on that thing and you're gonna download a whole zip of this, uh, of the firmware. Um, you need this so that you can get a uh, pass through and a few other things working. So I'm just gonna wait for the download to finish and I'll get you guys back when we actually go to flash the F7 and I'll show you guys how to do that process. All right, folks, so we've gotten our uh, firmware downloaded right here. So I'm gonna grab it. And uh, all I'm gonna do real quick here is, whoops, lots of windows open. Uh, so I'm gonna look here, I'm opening the zip and I'm looking for the hex file for the Omnibus F7, which is what I'm using here. So here we go, go down, 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 down. Omnibus F7, so you want the hex, not the bin, you want the hex. So I'm just gonna grab that and drag it over to my desktop so that it's easy to find. So it's right there, cool. So what we need to do now is basically flash our F7. Beta flight configurator. And I'm not gonna actually flash my F7 because I have done a lot of configuration to it already and I don't wanna redo all that stuff. But I'm gonna show you the process, it's very simple. So, you connect your, uh, first make sure that auto connect is disabled and all that stuff. You're gonna connect your uh, flight controller to your USB port and then you're gonna go to firmware flasher right here. Boom, 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 cool. And what you gotta do really is you can choose your board here Oh, actually, you don't actually you don't need to do that. Never mind. Forget that. All you got to do is load firmware local, and you're gonna find where we extracted that firmware that we just downloaded from Boris. So it's right here on mine. It's right on the desktop. Beta flight Omnibus F7 hex. Boom. And then all you're gonna do is uh, ah, make sure you mark full chip erase. Make sure you mark that on the F7 full chip erase, and then do a flash firmware. And what it's gonna do is erase all your stuff and flash the new 3.2 Beta flight firmware. So, once you do flash and you connect, you should see something like this. I'm just gonna connect my drone here real quick. Boom. And we connect. Oh, there we go. 
So my accelerometer is disabled, but everything is here. And this is the new Betaflight 3.1.1 configurator. It's a little bit different. There's some new stuff. Like I don't remember sonar being an available thing up here. This power and battery is uh, something new as well. I'm not too sure what it's about, but I believe it has to do with uh, individual ESC telemetry and that type of thing. Uh, we still have our uh, oh, expert mode. So we still have our fail safe. Everything is still the same here. PID tuning has not changed much as much as, as far as I can see. The receiver tab did change a bit, actually. The stick min, stick center, and stick max. I don't remember seeing this, but maybe it was already there. Um, <clears throat> modes are pretty much the same. There's a, uh, some new stuff like 3D switch and OSD disabled, though I think that was in 3.1.7. I just don't use that stuff very much, so I'm not sure. Motors, everything else looks fine. Uh, another thing you wanna make sure you do with uh, a fresh install is that this is gonna be set to one shot on your motor features. So make sure you set that to D shot because uh, that will make things a little bit better on your end. All right, so that pretty much covers it on getting this installed. And uh, now, before we get, now to get past through working, we just have to do one more thing. So let's disconnect that. Let's close this for a sec and leave it alone. So to get BL Heli pass through, we already have, so now we installed the latest Betaflight configurator and we installed Betaflight 3.2 on our flight controller. So what we need to do now is download the latest uh, BL Heli. So if you go to blheli32.com and you go to the download section, you can download the latest BL Heli suite. So we'll download that and it's gonna give you a little zip file that I've already downloaded and extracted to my desktop. Uh, here we go. So BL Heli Suite. So there we go. So this is the new BL Heli 32 designed specifically for the 32 bit BL Helis. Uh, there is no Chrome version of this right now. So you have to actually install it and you have to do this on a Windows machine, I believe. I don't think they have any other uh, binaries right now. So what you do is you connect your drone, make sure that Betaflight is closed and it's not connected in any way. So connect your drone, open BL Heli. And where are you? Okay, here we are. So BL Heli, here we are. It hasn't seen anything yet, so I'm gonna connect. Boom. Okay, so I'm connected and it has not seen my ESCs yet because I haven't powered on. So I'm gonna connect the drone to a battery right now. So you're gonna hear the first tones, but you're not gonna hear the other ones because we were in pass through and the flight controller is not activating. So if you do that and you go read setup, boom. So it has read our setup right here. And you can see that I have a few differences on my ESC. So if you go to ESC overview, so I have uh, motor uh, ESC one and four reversed. Uh, I have dis disabled throttle calibration across the board here because I'm not gonna, I'm using, uh, I'm literally only using uh, D-Shot, so I don't care about that. Uh, beacon strength, I changed my beacon delay and uh, I have my LEDs all turned on to the red and I set my current protection to 41 amps and everything else seems to be good to go. So this is what you're gonna have to do to get into your BL Heli suite. So you have to make sure you install the Betaflight 3.1.1, download the latest hex from uh, from Boris right here, install that, get that flashed, and then your BL Heli 32 pass-through will work. And uh, there's some interesting stuff here on the new uh, BL Heli 32 for sure. I have not played around with these uh, very much at all. There's like the motor timing, which I think there was an auto version. Yeah, so there's an auto. So I might actually leave my motor timing all to auto. I'm not sure, but I'm not gonna mess with that stuff right now. I'll mess, this, I'll mess with the stuff uh, after I test it a little bit more and get it tuned up. So uh, I hope that helps out guys. All right, guys, so I hope that was helpful, uh, and I hope that if you guys get stuck with the Omnibus F7 and the new 32-bit ESCs, that this helps you guys keep going and get your stuff in the air. So the two things to remember here are, one, if you're using S-Bus with inversion and you need inversion on it, do not use the pin mark S-Bus. Use the pin mark RX1 that I showed you guys on the picture, uh, because that one has the inverter working. In the future, maybe a, a couple months from now, or even a few weeks, who knows, they might release a firmware where the S bus pin is working and then you won't need to pin it to RX1, you can pin it to, to S bus and you, I might end up having to switch my wires around, which is not a big deal, I'm not too worried about. It. So the other thing to remember is the process through which you get pass through working on the new F7s. So you have to make sure that you first install a Betaflight Configurator 3.1.1 or whatever the latest is from GitHub. Make sure you install the latest 3.2 on your flight controller and then your pass through should work no problem. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you learned something here today. I hope this helps you guys out. 
there's anything else I can help you guys with in terms of the F7, if you have any questions or anything else like that, drop me some comments on this video and I'll try to help you guys up as much as possible. So thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.